95.5 KLOS and KLOS HD1 Los Angeles. That was Rain from an album called Faithful by the guy who just sat down in front of me. Please welcome to our Breakfast of the Beatles studios, a wizard, a true star, one of my all-time favorite artists, the great Todd Rundgren. Good morning, Todd. I know what it's like to be dead. How did you do that backwards <laughs> vocal on that? That must have been I mean, a lot of practice to do exactly. that. Exactly. Huh? Well, you write it out backwards first. <laughs> <laughs> and then and you go on from there yeah Todd is in town three nights at the Hollywood Bowl singing some Beatles songs well only one left now so that's right tonight's show and and I want to thank you you know for doing a show on a Saturday night and coming in on a early gray you, Sunday you, you morning. bastard making me <laughs> come here on a Sunday morning so uh, tell us how the show's been going the two you've done so far well I mean for me there's uh, you know, there are a few yardsticks that can compare to the Hollywood Bowl. You know, I've been to the Hollywood Bowl, but I've never played the Hollywood Bowl, and it's a really... This is the first time you've ever performed there? First time I've ever looked out wow. from the bowl wow. to the magnificent hillside with the fans and their... Well, it used to be lighters, now it's cell phones. Now it's all <laughs> cell phones, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, that alone is... Thr that would be thrilling enough. And then you're also being backed up by the, um, the orchestra, what they call the Hollywood, yeah. the Hollywood Bowl Philharmonic, which is substantially the L.A. Philharmonic, and um, it's, it's I'm verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> so you never played the bowl. I thought maybe you had played before. You know, a kid from Philly, the bowl is like you know one of these these big the bowl, yeah. places. <laughs> yeah. What are, what are some of your other favorite places to play? Well, the Greek theater I played uh, it's like the mini a version, couple of yeah. times. It's kind of like the mini version of that, but more accessible to the average pop band. Sure, <laughs> right. Suppose the Hollywood Bowl. It's funny, uh, L.A. proper, I think the first place that I ever played was a showcase at the Whiskey A Go Go, probably back in the late 60s, right. something like that somewhere around the first time I ever came to LA, which was a revelation in a way, caused me uh, not too long after that to decide to move here for a year. And then the earthquake in 1972 <laughs> convinced me I should move away from here. Get Canada. away from here, <laughs> exactly. go away. <laughs> Take a hint, <laughs> get out of here. So uh, it was an interesting year. It was the year that I recorded something, anything. My magnum opus? No, no, but you know, Mark, but it Mark was, told me to say that. No, but it was a you know, it was a hugely commercially successful album for me, and um, oh, it opened the door for me to meet Wolfman Jack. As a matter of fact, you know, because I had a song called Wolfman Jack on the yeah, record, yeah, and I met did he, him. Did he, he dug that song? <clears throat> oh, he, I would imagine. I wonder why. Yeah, but, well. um, <laughs> someone writes a song about you, and then. You, you're been not, awful then you're not going to play it? You know, you hear the rumors. Yeah. <laughs> Wolfman Jack really hates that song you wrote. Not called Wolfman Jack. Oh, no, it's great. He was, uh, he was terrific. He was a um, congenial host. He was living up um, one of the canyons. I think well, I've forgotten which one is behind the Beverly Hills Hotel there. Right. But he was living up there, and um, he had the studio in his house. You know, he broadcast the show that was... Um, coming out of uh, Mexico, yeah, I guess, yeah. because they had um, no restrictions on the wattage. That you could have pirate radio. That you know, yeah. people in Chicago could hear <laughs> this guy who's broadcasting out of Tijuana somewhere. Right. And he's really in his underwear. And, <laughs> and I, well, he <laughs> did, did it in his house. He was uh, courteous enough not to wear his underwear the evening <laughs> I was there. That was nice. But um, it was terrific. He had. Um, he was living the dream. As I recall, he had, we had a little snack, and they put out goldware, not silverware. Goldware. <laughs> goldware. Oh, I'm gonna give him a bell for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, the last time I saw him, I think was like in some sort of convention up in Canada, or something. He was being fated, or the wolf or something. Convention. All the wolf men. <laughs> All the wolf men. <laughs> wolf men of Canada. Yeah, and. Um, and I think he passed away shortly after that. But right. he was, he was radio yeah. in, in those days. He defined, 
you know, the personality, the freewheeling kind of, you know, unformatted playlist. You right. play whatever you feel like and stuff like that. And and the hell with the FCC, <laughs> you know, I'm going to broadcast it out. 200,000 watts from Tijuana, lovely Tijuana. I love it. We have a we have a, a Wolfman John commercial he did for a Yoko Ono album. That is, that's, that's oh my so goodness. Nice. Well, and he people was, think they he, know Yoko. Yeah, he was a bit of a whore, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>